Welcome to the Paying It Forward Podcast, Episode 7. But the biggest thing today is technology, comparing yourself to others. And I think this, not I think, I know, this is one of the biggest roadblocks or obstacles of not just young people, but people in general. Hi, and welcome to the Paying It Forward podcast. My name is Steve Richards. Thank you for listening. I believe if you want to attain a C-level position in your career, you need to understand what it takes to achieve that level of leadership. When you have access to successful entrepreneurs and senior executives who want to help you develop the skills and traits to become a great leader, it's like having your own mastermind group to mentor and guide you. In a nutshell, that's our podcast. In just a few moments, we'll sit down with Pam Meisel. Pam is the president of Evolution Partners Insurance. She is also a certified hypnotherapist for the past 39 years, where she helps individuals learn how to change behaviors, belief systems that hold them back, and how to create new habits that improve the quality of life. Pam is also a partner with her husband in a production company called Enfuego Entertainment. During this interview, Pam will discuss how at the early age of 13 and the loss of her mother helped shape her pathway, how being a competitive ice skater and early success with Amway helped shape her focus and drive as an entrepreneur. Pam also discusses why going over and above your role in assigned tasks is critical to your success. Finally, Pam talks about the power of the mind, visualization, and how these two key things shape you, your thoughts, beliefs, and actions. My guest today is Pam Meisel. Pam, it is a distinct honor and pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank you for having me, Steve. So, Pam, you have two passions. You are the president of a company, and you're also a hypnotherapist. And I am really curious on your path to getting here. Could you take a few minutes and explain to our listeners how you got to where you are today? Um, I'll, I'll try to be as brief as possible, but... I, I kind of had a unique uh, childhood. I lost my mom when I was 13. Mm. And it was very traumatic. But I, I even say to this day, there's no way I would be who I am today if that didn't happen. And I, I was a competitive ice skater mm. my whole life. And after my mom died, it was probably around 15, my dad said, you know, I can't afford to pay for this anymore. And I was like devastated. So I mm. literally had to start working when I was 15. Oh, wow. And my dad, he, you know, he was a, from the Holocaust period. And everything that he taught me was, you know, you have to have it eight to five. You know, everything is regimented. Everything's in a box. And so I, after 15, my way of thinking from my dad changed a lot. And to make a long story short, what happened was, as I was around 17 years old and I ran across a company called Amway and this company shaped my life. I really mean that because I, I ended up becoming the youngest direct distributor in Amway when I was 17 years old. Wow. And it, it was because I was surrounded by like entrepreneurs. It was a way of shaping the way that I thought that was so different from the way that I was brought up, you know, to be, an, to be a a successful person, be an entrepreneur, think out of the box. And all the philosophies that, that I live today literally came from that moment in time when I was that young. Uh, I knew that I always wanted to have my own business. And so from there, I wanted to go get my manicurist license. And I had a really good friend of mine. He was a lot older than me. He was very successful. And I, I went to him and said, I need I need a couple thousand dollars mm, to, wow. to go get my license. And this is where my first lesson came in. He said, I'm not going to give you that couple thousand dollars. I know if you really want this, you're going to do whatever it takes to get it. But then it hit me like he's right. And that, again, was like a lesson, another lesson that propelled me forward. And I did. I, I started doing all these other things, which included... Um, becoming a hypnotherapist, making money on the side. I, I did outside sales. I mean, I did everything I could to get my manicurist license. And then I did everything I could to become a hypnotherapist and pay for that myself. So these, these lessons that I learned, they were hard lessons, uh, continued to move me forward into a direction that I always saw that, you know, I should go. And, um, 
So in kind of more leading up to today, I remained being a hypnotherapist literally from the time I was like 20, I want to say, mm. till today. And I the reason why I loved that is because it all was again surrounded by empowerment and creating your own reality and the power of the mind and also helping people, helping others go through similar uh, situations, helping others achieve their goals and their aspirations. So um, from there, I uh, became an insurance professional which is a whole nother long story. Uh, when I met my husband, we started an entertainment company called uh, Infuego Entertainment, and here I am today. So Along this path, you took ownership very early for knowing you wanted to have a business, starting that business, trying a couple different things. It seems to me this entrepreneurial itch inside you uh, has paid off very well in two different fronts for sure one on the insurance side but also on the hypno hypnotherapist side i'm interested in the in the the mindset based on the things that you experienced early in life and getting that key advice that you got what was your mindset like then when you started to take off how did you take all of that at 17 or 20 package it up you took ownership and leadership right from the beginning being a hypnotherapist was crit critical and key to you developing not only your mind your own mindset but then you started to help others, and I'm really interested in what you saw in others. Like, how did you take the experience you had becoming a, a certified hypnotherapist and then leveraging that to other people? Like, if I were someone you met who you felt needed the assistance, how would you go about working with me? The reason why I wanted to become a hypnotherapist is, as I mentioned before, I was a competitive ice skater. I read a book on the power of the mind for sports. And so back then it was really taboo. And I took this book and it all had to do with visualization and just seeing yourself be exactly how you want to be. And so I did all these mental exercises and I literally was getting first place in mm. all my competitions. And that's how I became really obsessed with the mind. Mm. And so when I became a therapist, I was so excited and pretty much most of the stuff that I do, it comes from my own excitement and experience that I want to share with others. You know, I'm the, I'm the biggest problem solver because I always feel like there's an answer and I want, I've always wanted especially young people to not have to go through what I went through because I experienced a lot of trauma really young, but then I learned really young how to overcome by doing, by taking action, by being different, by you know not listening to others that that tell you you can't. And whenever once anyone said you can't do it, then I was like, oh yeah, you want to see me? And Watch that's me. the way I've, my attitude's always been. So I've always wanted to share these experiences and teach people, help others to feel the same way that I do. When you said you were take, you took action and you were different and you avoided negative influences, so to speak. If I think about younger kids today and whether you want to put on your hypnotherapist hat or your president of a company hat, I would be interested in how uh, how you would apply that, how I would apply that. How would you guide me or, or give me the guideposts? How would you give me the pillars that I would need? So I'm a youngster. Uh, I'm a worker. Let's say I don't visualize. I don't do the things you, you think about. I'm not a very good problem solver. How do I begin to apply that? Well, I think the biggest obstacle in roadblock today is that, number one, you, you mentioned, um, I think a lot of it's self-image. But the biggest thing today is technology, comparing yourself to others. And I think this, not I think, I know this is one of the biggest roadblocks or obstacles of not just young people, but people in general. And they, you know, they compare themselves to others or they listen to others that tell them that it can't be done. And even if you've not had the background experience of the mind, that anyone and everyone can still kind of block that out and just forget about it and move forward and not 
it, of course, it takes somebody maybe reminding them of that, somebody telling them that's what you're doing because some people maybe are not aware of it. it. You know, it depends on each person's background, but not to get distracted. And and the other thing is, is to, um, there's, there's always a way. You have to think outside of the box. You have to fake it till you make it. And uh, it's so important because uh, today I see that there's so much judgment from others and which makes you judge yourself. And so if you're talking about youngsters or just the way our society is today is, you know, pick a time to kind of stay away from technology and so that you don't have the distractions because it's so easy to get distracted and you really have to put blinders on and you need to surround yourself with the type of people that are like you. People that have the same mindset, people that are going in the same direction of you because you can just be pulled so easily and you don't even know it till it's done. Like <laughs> until, until you're just all of a sudden like on the wrong path or or just not feeling good about yeah, yourself. could be too late. Yeah. So take action, problem solve, be different, be true to yourself, hang around the right people, avoid negative influences, stay positive. How do I develop these tools or techniques? I've always had these slogans that are like ingrained in my brain and they're little, they're little quick sentences. And I think each person needs to come up with these things that work for them. If you don't mind, I'm just going to tell you like some that are, that sure. are Absolutely. really, really important. Love to hear them. I will until whatever direction you want to go in, it doesn't really matter. You're just going to keep going. You will until, and whenever you get obstacles, I think I mentioned before, another one I always say, well, you got to think out of the box. Yeah. There's always a way and never give up. So when you think about being a hypnotherapist, you start off, you're young, you take leadership, you take ownership, you take responsibility, accountability. You start through a process. You realize you have to be resourceful. You get in the insurance business. You mentioned you mentioned a couple of things. Visualization was one. You talked about being taking action and being different. How can somebody stand out? It seems to me that today's working society, the mindset is different than it used to be. How would you advise somebody either just coming out of college or the first few years of their career or even someone who's been in their career a while, how to align expectations meaning there's workplace expectations there are people expectations and there has to be an alignment for that how would how would you advise somebody to stand out or or set their expectations right so that they could stand out is not to take things so literally hmm. like when you're when you get a job mm -hmm. they give you here's your job duties and so that's just like a template mm -hmm. those are your priorities or the necessities of that job. Maybe the requirements and what your, your talents are and that's why they hired you. But what makes you stand out is going over and above mm. and doing things that others will not do or haven't thought about doing and making yourself accessible and asking questions and how can I help? I always love, like, it's so inspiring when someone comes to you to say, hey, I have a couple more, I have a couple minutes. Is there anything I can help you with? Mm -hmm. Or we were in the, a meeting, when we were in our meeting the other day, you mentioned this. Well, I had an idea about this. So it's like feeling comfortable enough in your own skin to express your, your feelings, your ideas, and your passions and that's what's going to separate you from everybody else. But for example, here's another story that kind of stands out, which I thought was super cool in Chicago. Um, it was around graduation time. And after you graduate, you know, all the college students are looking for jobs, right? There was this graduate, college graduate, that went on the streets of Chicago, put on their uh, gown, cap and gown, and put a sign on the front and the back saying, I graduated in computer technology, I think it was. I'm ready to work for you now. Because I guess he was online because nowadays everything is online and 
If you don't do something to make yourself stand out, there's five zillion emails that are going to all these companies, right? Yep. It's very, very rare that you're going to just get a job. They're going to, it's a, you know, a number and a hat, right? This guy got like 10 job interviews. Wow. Like presidents of companies that were on the street in Chicago, downtown Chicago, were going up to him. He had his resumes with him, by the way, <laughs> and he got a job. And I just think that's such a, another example of doing things that are out of the box. Don't take no. You will never get to a hundred no's without getting a yes. Mm. I always love that because when someone says no, I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, well, like, you, you look at the word no as a, a, a problem <laughs> to go solve. I like I that. Remember, exactly. I like that. Uh, In the business world, as the president of evolution, you have to build relationships and network. Yes. How, do you, how do you go about doing that? And yeah. what advice would you have for people to, as they're building relationships with other people? I love that question because my whole business, the insurance industry is built on relationship. Mm -hmm. And I was on the company side for 20 plus years. And when I went out and uh, started Evolution Partners with uh, two of my previous agents, uh, it was all because of relationship. I am the middleman between the insurance companies and the independent agents. And what I do is I put those two together. Okay. And so when I went to these carriers to tell them my business plan, you know, it's all about relationship. And the thing that going back to the young folks today, what they, I see that they don't have is looking somebody in the eyes. Mm. Always look in the person's eyes when you're mm. talking to them, you know, develop a connection with that person. Relationships are not about you. Mm. And that's the most important thing. Relationships are about the other person. Finding a solution for the other person, especially if you're going to be in sales. It's not about what you're selling. It's about, it's about solving, you know, a mm. need for that person. And it goes in every single thing in life, whether you're working with a boss, a coworker or anybody, it's, it's all about, you know, them. And if they feel important and if they feel that they're being listened to, then nothing can be taken away from that. They will remember you forever. I mean, I have such strong relationships from so many years ago and it's because you, you the connection where they're just real people, you know, you're looking at them as, as who they are and you're getting to know them. If I could just add one more thing, never fear anyone that has a higher position than you or that some big wig, because I always feel that that person just has a different job than you. Well, you're not intimidated. I'm not intimidated. They're, they just have had a different experience and they just have a different job. So I'm, I'm learning to build relationships. I'm out in the workforce. Um, I communicate on a daily basis. Hopefully I'm solving problems. And it sounded to me like as long as I was genuine and I served other people first in that relationship. Every once in a while, I'm assuming I might run into some conflict in a conversation or a viewpoint differently than yours or vice versa. First of all, first question would be, how do you deal with conflict if it comes up? And what tools do you think people should have today to be better at conflict resolution? If you know that there's gonna be conflict in life, that there's gonna be challenges in life. I think expectation is probably the, a key word, mm. and we all have it. Uh, it's very, very difficult not to have expectation, but people are people. There's nothing that you can do about others. The only thing that you can do or deal with is yourself, and sometimes, you have to, again, fake it. Sometimes you have to be respectful and and walk away and know that, well, I don't really feel that way or I didn't really appreciate what was said or whatever, whatever, but never lose sight of you. So how do I take, how do I take me okay. in a conflict? I know me. I can either engage further or disengage. Mm -hmm. I'm in a discussion. I think it's a conflict that seems to be healthy but not really the best healthy and I, I can either walk away or I can dig in and deal with it are, are there certain ways if I know myself that I should deal with conflict like what's the best advice in conflict am I trying to get a win-win 
or am I trying to overserve the other person, or do I just go to your point? I just walk away and eh, you know whatever. I don't see it that way. If it's a business relationship, then in many cases you just have to be respectful and mm -hmm. uh, listen and say thank you for your point of view. Not everyone thinks the same way as you, and you're not going to change their mind. You don't know what they've gone through or what has made them feel the way that they feel. And, uh, you know, we'll just talk business right now. Personal is, is maybe a little different for me. But in business, believe me, I don't feel the way a lot, a lot of people feel mm -hmm. <laughs> or don't run their businesses the way maybe I would. Mm -hmm. But that's okay because if it's, unless it's, it has to do with your business, but if you're working for somebody else, then you've decided to take on that role and you just need to stick to, you know, basically the role uh, within whatever constraints those are. But I, I don't think you have to agree or pretend like you agree. I think you should still remain to be yourself and just be respectful. You have two really cool hats. I like them both. And it's in this great blend in a podcast or a conversation. So as a hypnotherapist, what do you see as the biggest challenge for people today? What I do is I listen to what people say. So in the beginning, whatever people say when you ask them questions, whatever they say to you is what's in their subconscious. Mm -hmm. And whenever anyone says anything negative, then you know that's a part of them or they wouldn't mm -hmm. be saying it. True. So then basically you take that and you reverse it back and you know that that's what you're going to work on with that individual. Mm. The, the negatives you're going to turn into positives and by a method which allows it to go into your subconscious mind is what makes the actual changes in your life. In addition to being the president of Evolution Partners and a certified hypnotherapist, you are also the co-founder uh, and in Fuego Entertainment, Fuego Films. Tell, tell me about that role. Tell me what it's like to have co-founded an entertainment company and also to work with your husband. It's a great question. It's really changed over the years. My husband is this amazing writer. And just to give you a little bit of backstory, when I first met him, he said he had all these scripts. He was an actor and he said he had all these scripts. And I was like, oh, let me read your scripts. And when I was reading his scripts, I was just blown away because mm. it didn't seem anything like Eric. Like they were crazy, like out of the box, wild, mm. really smart scripts. And I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. And he, he said, you know, one day he wanted to do, make a movie and, and you know me. Can't say no. I heard that, I'm like, <laughs> let's do it. I can't you say know? no. <laughs> let's do it, you know? Yeah, he's like, oh, no, we can't do that. And how are we going to do that? And where are we going to get the money to do that? And so long story short, fast forward, uh, we ended up uh, creating a company. We did our first little teeny, you know, movie. And we did, you know, they got bigger and bigger as it, as it went along. And, and uh, Eric, I got to give, it's Eric that has created so much. I'm just so proud of him at, at every turn how he's just followed his dream. But where my roles come in as a, um, you know, to give feedback to him on the creativity side, and then while we're in production or pre-production of actually shooting, it's the preparation and it's the management of it because that's what my background is. I'm also, I have a creative side because of being a cosmetologist. I'm also an artist. And so I love the whole color and creative side of things and then just managing others, just more of the organizational side of things. How about mentors or role models? How have they played a part in helping you? I've never been a, uh, a person that like has a mentor, like an mm -hmm. actual physical mentor. Mm -hmm. I always just found either books or they were always motivational type books that I practiced over and over and over and find those sayings that are the way that you want to be. Okay, Where role models. Role models, um, mostly to do mentally as opposed to like a role model because they have all this money or it's more mm -hmm. 
more personal. It's mindset. It's a mindset. Yeah. And I think the qualities like of a leader, you have to be flexible and know that things are going to change. They're not going to go the way that you think they're going to go. In fact, 20 years from now, it's not going to be anything like you imagined. Mm. Hopefully, if you stay on your path, it'll be better than you could mm -hmm. even have you know, perceived it to be. And know that, that any little thing that you do, like I would never change anything. I wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't be where I am today. So take all that stuff and just know that it's just a lesson, you know. Mm -hmm. and make sure you stay creative and persistent. Just play the game better than anyone else. No, oh, that's great. Looking ahead, what's down the road for you that has you excited? I am so darn excited to travel. I always had a goal to be in every country in the world to, oh, wow. by, before I died. And wow. so I've been to many, many countries. So that got me excited. So that's my... I'll say my short-term goal. If a listener wanted to reach out to you, what is the best way for them to reach out to you just to reach you at evolutionpartnersinsurance.com? Yeah, that would be good. That'd be good. It's got my phone number on there. It has my email address. Evolutionpartnersins.com. Pam, this was wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. She is Pam Meisel, president of Evolution Partners Insurance, co-founder of Enfuego Entertainment, and a certified hypnotherapist. During this episode, you had the opportunity to hear Pam share with you the importance and value of mindset, visualization, and specifically how to stay focused and overcome obstacles and roadblocks by taking action. Pam also discussed the importance of having the right attitude, how that attitude can shape you, your thoughts, beliefs, and actions. She also discussed going over and above your role, your current task load. We also discussed leadership qualities, conflict, conflict resolution, responsibility, and accountability. This information and more is in the show notes section of this episode on our website. Simply go to www.lessonsfromthecsuite.com forward slash episode seven. You can follow our podcast for free on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Libsyn, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. If you happen to think this is a five-star worthy podcast and you leave a written review, I'll be sure to mention your name in an upcoming episode as a small way to say thank you. If you're not yet following this podcast, please go to www.lessonsfromthecsuite.com, sign up or subscribe, it's free, and you'll receive a PDF on various ways you can pay it forward every day. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions for the podcast, any guest suggestions, or any feedback in general, please send us an email at feedback at lessonsfromthecsuite.com or go to our website and submit a message directly. Thank you for listening. Until next time.